Hi, my name is Shai Williams and today we're going to talk about a repeated measures factorial ANOVA. So let's start off by making some data. I'm going to use the CBind function, but let's do this one column at a time. So what I'm going to have is we have a repeated measures design, which means we have one group of people. And we're going to do this so that they have two different factors, each with two levels. So really there's four different conditions here. So I need four different distributions. We're going to do that with the rNorm function. So we have 50 different people going through four different conditions. So 50 people say the mean is 20 and then the standard deviation is four. Then our mean for our second one is going to be 25. The mean for our third one is going to be 30 and then our mean for our fourth one is going to be 35. And that just looks like this, where we have 50 data points where the first 50 is the first condition, the second 50 is the second condition, and so forth. So the next column is going to be our two levels of our first factor, and the column after that is going to be our two levels of our second factor. So let's do that in this way. So we're going to repeat ourselves one to two, hundred times and we're going to sort this. What that looks like is this where the first 50 is our first level and the second 50 is our second level. Then this next one is going to be a little bit confusing but what we're going to do is we're going to repeat ourselves one to two but only 50 times this time so the same thing but half the amount of times. We're actually going to sort this as well So it looks like the same, but half amount of data points. We're going to repeat this whole thing two times. And you'll see in a second why. So that's what we get here. So we get 1 for 50, 2 for 50, 1 for 50, 2 for 50. And so before we move forward, let's look at what that looks like. So what we have is these are our scores. These are our levels for our first factor. These are our levels for our second factor. So condition one has the idea of one, one, whereas condition two has one, two, condition three is two, one, and condition four is two, two. Lastly, what we also need is our participant ID. So we're gonna just go one to 50 because we have 50 people and it's gonna rotate through that. And what I mean by that is this first one, which is one, one, has people one, two, 50 and then 1 to 50 again for the second condition and so forth. Great. So this is the time where I say plot your data, but with native R plotting, it's kind of hard with this complex design. So I'm going to resort to ggplot2 in another video. So we're going to just move ahead here. The next thing we need to do is organize our data. So we want it as a data frame is the first thing. So we need to convert it to a data frame with the as.data.frame function. And there we go. And we have these levels. So let's name those levels, call names, data equals C. Let's say scores is our dependent variable. Then we have levels one, which is our first factor levels, levels two, which is our second factor levels. And then we have our subject IDs. Perfect. Now the other thing is these levels and subjects are actually factors, not numeric values. So we need to change that as well. So data column two, so levels equals as dot factor data column two. I'm gonna do this for all three of the last columns. Three, three, four, or what we see is these are now factors. We're going to use the package easy, and that's going to give us the easy ANOVA function. And that works in this way. So even though it's easy to use, it's not entirely intuitive when you first look at it. So the first thing we want to do is put our dependent variable, and that's the parameter dv. But what's less intuitive is it equals dot brackets. Um, and we're going to just put our scores in there. And that's just corresponding to the title of our column. And then what we want is within, and that equals the same thing. 
And we're using within because we have a repeated measures design, but if we had an independent samples design, we would use between here. And we're gonna put levels one, comma, levels two. And then we're gonna put WID equals, so our ID for our subjects, which is our subject column. Then we wanna add a couple parameters, so detailed equals true, because we want more information. Uh, we're gonna use sums of squared type three. If you don't know what that is, Google it, because it's important. And then we're gonna use our data frame. So we're just telling it where to look for it. And that's this data frame here. Perfect. So if we run all that, what do we get? So what we get is our output here. We have our degrees of freedom of our numerator, degrees of freedom of our denominator. We have our sums of squared for those as well. We have our F value, our P values, and then our generalized eta squared values. Cool, so ignore the intercept, it's not really important, but what we have is our first factor, so our main effect one, our second factor, our main effect two, and then our interaction effect. We'll start off with degrees of freedom. The numerator of degrees of freedom is one, which makes sense because it's the factors levels, which we have two factors, each with two levels, minus one, so that's two minus one is one. The degrees of freedom of our denominator is a little bit more complicated, but it's the degrees of freedom of our numerator, so like I just said, two minus one, times our sample minus one. So our sample size is 50 minus one, which is 49, times the two minus one, which is one, which gives us 49. And of course, if we look over here at our p-values, what we'll see is we have two main effects, but no interaction effect. And then we also have our generalized eta squareds here. So how do we report this? We have our F one comma 49, which is our two degrees of freedom. And then our F value for our first main effect is gonna be 416.13 with a P value uh, that's very small. So less than 0.0001 and a generalized eta squared value of 0.68. Um, so I'm just using GES here, but when you're reporting it, eta is a symbol, so make sure you're using the right symbol with reporting. So this is our first main effect, and then we can do the same with our second main effect, and finally with our interaction as well. So our second main effect, F value, is 134.11. With a p-value that's also very small, so less than 0 0.0001, and a generalized eta squared of what looks like 0 0.32. Finally, we have our interaction, which has a it actually has an f value of 0 0.00 if you round it, and then we have a p-value of 0.95. 8, 4, and a generalized eta squared of 0, 0.00. And there you have it.